I actually don't have a phone at the moment. I do have a smartphone, but I'm trying to get my old number back, and it's not as easy as I thought it would be. Um, so I'll just keep trying, and if not, I'll, I'll try your cell phone. Okay, I just thought I'd let you know that I've got your message. Thanks. Bye. Tuesday, 5.08 p.m. So the rat is ringing to say, yeah, um, I think what we were talking about is great idea. I'm actually ringing someone else's phone, so I won't talk for too long. And my phone is hopefully by the middle of the week will be up and running. Thanks. Bye. Sunday, 11.53 a.m. It's Robert Rapson here. I'm just ringing on uh, Wednesday afternoon. I'm still having my phone up and ringing, but I must try it tomorrow. Um, catch you later. Bye. The guy who was running the place at the time s- sort of said, oh, why do you try something clay? And funnily enough, I thought, what shall I make in clay? And I just didn't think of, not being a practical person, I didn't think of anything domestic, because across the road there was a farmer's, and down the road Briscoe's. I thought, well, if you want a dinner set, you just go and buy one for $30 or something. <laughs> Why bother making one? And so I made the ship that I went to Europe when I was 20, the Angelina Lara. When I, when I came back from Australia in the early 80s, uh, I was very, had a lot of nervous problems. and But I was working on it, and I was aware of what... And my father got... My parents, actually, I should say, but my father especially, he was very keen for me to develop something for, for me to do with my hands. Because you often notice people who do have ner- a nervous problem, or even a breakdown, I suppose, that, that their hands are constant, or legs are constantly moving. So he thought the idea of needing bread... So we got into bread make briefly, but it it didn't really grab me. It tasted okay. When I found clay, I think it was almost like I've been waiting. It's sort of like something you're waiting for. I wanted the clay to look like it was moving, that had a certain fluidity to it. Um, and with the ships too, I mean, a lot of them I like the history of them, the fact that they had not just a social history, some of them is because they were glamorous ships or something, but they often, countries would uh, invest money to build these ships because just the actual building of the ship employed so many people. And also I can remember in the 50s it still was various ships that like would serve Europe and that when they would come and people would talk about it, oh, the Rangatani came in today or something, you know, and, and just going down to, in those days, a farewell was a big thing, you know, that you'd go down and you'd go on the ship and have a few drinks and sit around for a while and then you'd get off the ship and a band would probably playing or recorded music and then the, the streamers and everything and it was a big deal. Someone suggested I put them in a craft fair and, and he's born which I didn't go to, but they, they arranged and took them. And someone contacted me and said, oh, I like this work. Can you make some more? A lot of the time people recognise the ships especially, I think because they're a lot more recognisable than the cars. And because they're so recognisable, the people can enjoy them on a kind of historic level as well as on a on an art level. But there's been some interesting um, people coming in, actually, saying, oh, I know it's it's anatomically correct, but it should be painted in, in white instead of with the blue base and the and the red top. And I've told Robert this, and I've said, oh, they, for example, Oriana, someone came in and said, oh, it should be white. And he's, he's usually incensed because he'll say, this is the 1975 to 79 paint job when it was bought by the Greek line and used in the Greek islands and it was painted white then. True, it was green, you know, it was red and blue before, but the incarnation I've portrayed it as here is the 75 to 79. I, I tend to let Robert re- arrange the window, um, you know, to suit his, his own aesthetic, but um, some, I have been known to 
take the odd car out of the window and and put it out the back and replace it with a boat. Uh, <laughs> I ju I don't know. I just I just find the boats a bit easier on the eye. At one stage, I was interested in, a, you know, commissioning something from Robert because I'd seen we had already had quite a few of his stuff, and um, so I thought it'd be. I was very interested in family history, uh, and on my mother's side, I knew precisely when they'd arrived in New Zealand and on what boat. So, um, and the boat was called uh, the Doric, and I happened to have a, a photo of it. So. Um, I gave copies of the photo to Robert and um, you know asked him to commission it. Um, so the family arrived in 1888 um, on this particular ship from Ireland. And um, because of where they were put in the window at Exhibit A, um, and you know if you ever visit there and go in and you just constantly see people walking down the, the footpath mm. and they always stop and they always look. So there's something about them that is, you know, intriguing. People come in on the occasion and say, oh, I just can't understand why, you know, what people see in those cars. And then I've seen other people say the exact opposite. Love the cars, hate the boats. And I thought, my God, that would be just the perfect thing for Len's birthday coming up and it since she has no possessions from her past or her parents' past, um, that would be like the first thing. So we got hold of Robert and uh, I commissioned him to do this um, Luciana Manara, which was the name of the ship that um, the Lenz family came on. So my first meeting with Robert was when he came, because the deal Gil made with him was, um, you know, when you've made the boat, come and have dinner and meet Elaine and, um, you know, meet us, as it were. So that was the first time Robert came to dinner, mm. wasn't it? He came bearing the boat. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and the little accoutrements to go with the Yes, that's oh, right. The, the, the mermaid whale's tail. and the whale's yeah. tail and so on. And, um, yeah, we and found him... And started a relationship. Yeah, and we yeah. found him a very intriguing, interesting person. There's nobody else like Robert. Or anyone who makes work but remotely like that. He has a, he has a that. voice that is powerful. Yeah, we think it's a very strong voice. Mm. It's sort of it's a very quirky view of the world, mm. I think, and there's not enough quirkiness in the world, I don't think, mm. or individual voices like yeah. that. And just the fact that you know he's clearly someone who is going to you know do exactly what he wants to do or needs to do. And, you know, he's never been sort of affected by, um, you know, what mm. popular wisdom might be or, you know, what taste might be or it has to you come know, style. Him. It seems to be, you know, he seems to have this um, integrity about his work, which I think is what probably draws us to artwork anyway. You know, there's, a, there's some sort of truth or integrity mm. yes. shines through. Yeah. And I think, you know, just looking at some of Robert's work, you know, the the, you know, the thumbprints of the maker are so there. Mm, yeah. You know, it couldn't be anybody else's. And and I think that that's the thing. It's sort of in your face because it's saying, you know, that's my thumbprint. I made that. And, you know, I twisted and this that. this is the way of, I do it. Yes, which and I just I think, you to... yeah, which is great. I think I was always, from the beginning, a bit concerned about painting myself into a corner and um, just being thought the, sh the ship man. I remember hearing someone say the ship man, and I thought, I don't want to be the ship man. I want to be other things as well. I suppose. And I've, I've always liked cars. I've always liked the, the design of cars and, and the way you can see some designers... Um, not probably not so much now, but in, in the past, were given sort of carte blanche to sort of create a look that was special. Cars now are often very generic, but sort of in the fifties and sixties, they were often allowed allowed to. Um, and so, so the, the cars echoed the the decades. Very much American cars were 
classic that in the late fifties when sp space technology came, the ship the cars looked like spaceships. They were, and they were at the peak of America's economic boom, and they didn't think about petrol economy. They just totally over the top, and I, I just love that. I really love his um, boat, his um, little um, London buses, because that is that I just just a wonderful idea of documenting what's happened in certain eras or times of um, uh, our history. Well, the London buses have things written on them, like um, he will might choose an era of maybe the 80s or something like that, and he'll, he'll put on their shows that have come from the 80s, like musicals and films that have come from the 80s and books, and these all go on the London buses. So that when you look at them, you get an idea of what happened in the 80s at that particular moment, and it, it takes you right back to it. I just had this idea of, and I, just, I always find interesting in these magazines sometimes where they reinvent something like Wonder Woman or something, give her a update, and and sometimes the updates are awful. Like you know, they they they're just they've lost the spirit of of the um. That's like Star Trek, or anything, you know, but there's different versions to the franchise. So that's what the idea that yeah, if you take an icon and update it, you know, when you see pictures of Jesus, he always looks. He does. He looks like a German, you know, long hair. Now, obviously, he doesn't look Jewish at all. <laughs> and, um, they've actually worked out. Uh, some BBC program worked out what he would have probably looked like, and he didn't look anything like those sort of American rock bands of the sixties. You know, their long hair and all that sort of romanticized versions, and um, with the sort of blue eyes, you know, sort of staring into heaven. So yeah, I just thought, and I mean, this this one looked. I thought. Unintentionally, I don't know whether intentionally or unintentionally, looks a little bit like Michael Jackson. And maybe, you know, Michael Jackson was definitely a confused person and he must have had alternatives during his life. So being a rock star isn't all roses and chocolates. It ultimately can be quite tragic. And, uh, but yeah, just the idea that some, the same with the Buddha or anyone or, or even dare I say it, Muhammad, you know, like, how would they transcend time? I mean, like, that they weren't caught on video or anything like that. And that, that that's, comes up in the rock opera too, that why did you come to Earth at that time when there was no mass media or anything like that? It would have been much better to come now when you could have really gone on satellite, you know. <laughs> I want to make work that is just of the time or something, but but at the same time, it's I want people. I, I, it's nice to let people know that you're not just have Asperger's syndrome when it comes to making ships or some sort of autism that I can just turn out. That I do have lots of other interests. It's just that ships was the was the niche that appealed to a lot of people because we live in a maritime nation. But I feel that I've turned a corner somehow. I, you know, I can't exactly say what, but um, that I'm not quite as satisfied as I once was. You know, there has to be something else.